Hi guys, good morning. I hope you are doing well and finding ways to stay positive and engaged. Um, just wanted to tell you that we met as faculty yesterday to kind of discuss um, what are the best ways of delivering online instructions, what is working for, um, for different people in different classes. And um, the one thing that I thought particularly interesting is that a lot of faculty are recording shorter lectures um, just on individual topics as opposed to having a lecture that spans multiple concepts. So I'm going to um, try doing that from now on for you guys and hopefully that will make it easier for you to go back and find the material that um, you need just based on lecture title. So um, this little mini lecture is going to be on structures in assembly. Um, so structures, uh, which I'm sure you have already seen in C++ or in C, are basically ways of grouping different elements of data together um, such that you can, you know, generate pointers to them or generate or write functions that will operate on a group of variables um, together. This group will usually have some meaning such that, uh, such as, for example, this structure um, rect for rectangle, which contains, um, let me get my handy pointer, which contains uh, the lower left x and the lower left y coordinates for a rectangle, the rectangle color, um, as well as the width and the height of the rectangle. So together, these five variables may represent the rectangle in some um, graphics program. Okay. Um, Data in uh, structures is stored in contiguous memory, um, kind of like in arrays in that um, data of one element is stored right after the other. Um, there's a little bit of trickery to that, which, we'll, which I'll show you guys in a second. Um, but this is convenient for a number of reasons. One, it makes it easy to access the different variables because you know where they are and you know how big they are. Um, and it will also make it easier for you potentially to transfer data uh, between computers because all you need to do is write a certain number of bytes to a socket and then that will, um, you know, when you received that data on another computer, you're able to interpret those bytes as a structure um, if you know kind of the layout of the, of the fields in that structure. Um, now you're going to have to be a little bit careful in general, not in your assignments, but in general uh, when you transfer data like that because different computers might have different endianness of bytes and that could mess things up. So just kind of keep it as a caveat, though this is not going to come up in, in our work here in this course. Um, so once you have a structure, you may need to, you will need to know the size of all the elements to generate assembly code. Now you know the size of the elements because you wrote the structure. So um, when your compiler analyzes this code, the compiler likewise knows the size of each element and so is able to generate assembly um, accordingly. When you guys are doing this by hand, you are the compiler and so you will need to keep track of how big the different elements are. And I'll show you guys an example of that. So the first question I have for you guys is what is the size of the structure in memory? Okay, you can think about how you would approach this problem. Um, well, we have some number of elements. Okay, they need to be stored in memory. We know the size of each element. Okay, um, we can know this from basically their type and for each type we know um, the size of the, the number of bytes that is required to store each of those elements. Um, and so, Presumably, you could just add them up, the number of elements, um, each multiplied by its, the size of its type, and that should give you the size of the structure. Right? So if we look at integer LLX, that will be four bytes. Here's another four bytes. Here we have another byte. And then here we have um, eight bytes and eight bytes used to store the double. Okay, so we have four plus four plus one plus eight plus eight. Well. It turns out it's actually not so uh, easy. So what happens in practice is this. When we store the data in memory, we can kind of mark out the different bytes. Okay, so we store um, LLX from the structure pointer or whatever the structure is stored in memory. Let's 
just call it zero for convenience. And then the first four bytes are taken by LLX, the next four bytes are taken by LLY. Now, what we see here is that the color is stored in, uh, uh, oops, let me change this real quick. So this should be one byte, which I wanna make this a little bit shorter. This is not gonna work now, yikes. Can I make this bigger? Almost. Ugh, okay, I'm just gonna cheese it. Okay, great. No one saw this. So, okay, so what we have is, what we have is, where's my pointer? Okay, we have LX in four bytes, we have LY in uh, eight bytes, and color is stored in one byte. Okay, now we have all these different bytes of wasted space before we store width. Why is that? Well, there's a requirement in, uh, in, in x86 and, uh, and on Windows machines, basically on, on many architectures, such that um, the variables should be aligned in memory to their size, okay? So basically, if you have a variable of size um, eight, it needs to be aligned, meaning start at an address that is a multiple of eight, okay? So we can start LX at zero, zero is a multiple of four. We can start LY at four, because four is a multiple of four. We can start the byte basically anywhere, because anything is gonna be a multiple of one, okay? But then we need to start with um, at a address that is a multiple of 16, okay? So here we have eight, here we have another eight, and so this starts at 16, and then this starts at, uh, oh sorry, multiple of eight. Okay, so this starts at 16, and this starts at 24, and we're good, the memory's aligned, okay? So when you're computing offsets into uh, these variables, you need, to, you need to know that they're going to be aligned by the compiler on an eight byte boundary. Okay, so um, let's look at uh, an example of this in practice. Okay, so I've extended the CSCI 366 examples with uh, a uh, structure example. So if we look at the beginning of the code, I am defining the structure so we have a structure uh, rectangle uh, with the field that we defined, that we described earlier. And now I'm adding a function, get rectangle area, that will take a rectangle pointer, so a pointer to the structure, and it will return a double, which will be the area. So um, the one, one tricky thing here is that I need to define this rectangle area here in the beginning of the file, so to speak, or in some .h file, such that when I define um, this function, this type will already be defined. Okay, so I can't define it down here. Okay, so that's fine. So we have our uh, rectangle area defined. And now what I'm going to do is instantiate a rectangle R with these elements. So my width is going to be 1.5 and my height is going to be three, okay? Um, so the first thing I may want to do is calculate um, the size of the structure. Okay, so let's run this. And look, the size is 32, right? Which matches up with the size we described here. Okay, um, so to get the size of it, I'm going to use the size of function, which automatically calculates this, um, the size of this, um, the size of the memory required to store this data. Um, in this structure, and this is a built-in function. So now I want to compute the area of the rectangle. I'm going to print it out as a double, okay? And I'm calling get rect area with a reference to my structure. So this is the structure, and when I pass in the ampersand in front of it, I am really passing in the address, I'm asking for the address to rect, so basically where it's stored in memory, um, to be passed into this uh, function. So inside the function, um, I'm gonna actually split this vertically for you guys. OK, 
Okay. So inside this function, I am uh, getting the structure pointer in RDI. Okay. And I know what the structure is. Okay. I know this because it's defined. So your compiler would know this. And because you are your own compiler in this case, you know what this is. Okay. So what we know is that LLX takes four bytes. LLY takes four bytes. The character is, takes one byte, but it is stored in eight bytes to align the memory for the doubles, which are then themselves stored in eight bytes. Okay. So if I want to compute the area, I need to get the width and the height. Now I'm going to access this, uh, the memory of this by loading from RDI, which is the address of the pointer plus 16 and plus 24. So why 16? Well, we have four uh, plus four. So that's eight plus another eight. And so this starts at 16 and this starts at 24. So I'm, I'm loading those values. Now I'm loading them into new types of registers, which are XMM zero and XMM one. Those are register used registers used for floating point calculations. So I'm going to use the move instruction, but I'm going to be moving a signed double. Okay. So I'm treating this memory as a signed double it goes into XMM zero. This goes into XMM one, and then I'm multiplying signed doubles, XMM zero, XMM one, the result will be an XMM zero. That is also what is being returned because the return value of this function is the return type of this function is a double. Okay. So here we're turning a double, we're interpreting that as a double. And when we run this, we learn that the rectangle area is indeed 4.5. Okay. So that is how you can use structures.